The Utah Jazz are quietly building an NBA dynasty. After trading away both of their stars in Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, the Utah Jazz were able to receive a ton in return for both of those guys. As they were able to get a bunch of young players in return that are producing right away, but they were also able to get a ton of draft picks going forward. And due to the trades they were able to pull off for those guys, a lot of people saw the Jazz as a younger team that had a ton of potential going forward. But after having a pretty successful season last year and also just acquiring John Collins in a very favorable deal for Utah, I think the Jazz are in the beginning stages of building an NBA dynasty. But quickly, before we get the video started, for those of you who may not know, I'm Juicy Sports, I make opinionative NBA content, and if you guys enjoy videos similar to this, hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that post notification bell. I also want to quickly mention that I recently started up an MMA channel, and if you guys are interested in that, the link will be be in the description but anyways let's get into it This previous season, the Utah Jazz were able to put themselves in a great position. As after Utah's front office decided it was time to go in the direction of a full rebuild and traded away both of their main two guys in Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, the young players they received in return in those deals produced for them right away and they turned themselves into a pretty good team right out of the gate. And they were even one of the better teams in the Western Conference for a decent portion of the season. And even though Utah had a pretty difficult second half of the season, just the fact that they were even competing for a playoff spot or even competitive in the beginning portion of the season was certainly seen as a huge success for this roster. But on top of getting those nice young players like Colin Sexton and Larry Markinen, the Jazz were also able to get a ton of draft picks in return for those two guys. In terms of first round picks more importantly, but also some second round picks as well. And when you give a lot of draft selections to Danny Ainge, obviously there's going to be a ton of hype and excitement. Because over the years, Danny has proved proven the ability to draft very effectively, but also when you have that many draft picks, it allows you to make certain trades that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to make if you didn't have those picks, of course. Because for example, if the Jazz next season or the season following are much better than people expected, and the Jazz front office could all of a sudden become buyers instead of sellers at the trade deadline or just during the season in general, then having all those picks allows you to go out and maybe bring in a star or a superstar that would inevitably request a trade from whatever team they're on. And it just helps put the Jazz in a perfect position because either A, they can just continue to build through the draft and slowly get better and better, or if they become better than people expected, then they could become buyers and they have all the draft picks in the world to trade for a superstar in return and then really jumpstart and push the Jazz forward in their eventual goal to win an NBA championship. So at this point, I think it's pretty clear that the Jazz are in a really good situation. But in the past, there's been some other teams that have been in a very similar situation to the Jazz where they had some nice young players on the roster, maybe they also had a ton of draft picks as well, but they weren't able to eventually live up to the goal of winning an NBA championship in the long term future. So the question at this point is, why do I think the Utah Jazz are any different? Why do I think the Jazz are eventually going to turn themselves into an NBA dynasty? Well, I think this comes down to a couple different factors, but the main factor has to be the organization. When you're going in the direction of a rebuild, the most important thing that you can possibly have is good management. And I'm talking about the president of basketball operations, your general manager, people in that organization just have to know what they're doing, of course. Because if you have great guys in those positions, then you're probably going to utilize your draft picks very effectively and draft some nice players with your own picks. And if you're lucky enough to get some other teams picks as well, then that just makes it even better as you have more opportunities to strike gold. And when you look at Utah's front office, what they've been able to do over the past couple seasons has been really impressive, even though they weren't able to eventually live up to their goal. Either way, it was really impressive how they were able to build up their organization until they got to the point where they were able to make the playoffs each and every season. And at this point, they just added Danny Ainge somewhat recently to their organization, who's also been known at doing a phenomenal job at rebuilding an organization as he did it with the Boston Celtics. So I do think the people they have in their organization are obviously very competent. And I do think that's a huge reason for why I'm very confident in the Jazz and a huge reason for 
why I think they could turn this team into a dynasty in the long term future. Now the next reason for why I think they could turn themselves into a dynasty has to be the players they already have on the roster. Because when you look at both of their main players last season in Colin Sexton and Larry Markkinen, both of those guys had great seasons. But specifically when you look at Larry Markkinen, he had a true breakout season last year. As he averaged 25 and a half points per game on 8.6 boards and also adding 1.9 assists. Now earlier on in Markkinen's career with the Chicago Bulls, he actually had a ton of hype and excitement around his name after the way he was able to play in his initial two seasons with them. But unfortunately after his first two seasons, it just seemed like Markkinen's career was going downhill as he just consistently got worse and worse from there. So originally when he got traded to the Utah Jazz, people did know that he did have talent, but they weren't necessarily expecting all that much from him just due to the fact that his career was definitely going in the decline. But ever since getting to Utah, it just seemed like Larry completely changed his game and completely improved his game in literally every single aspect. As from that three point range, he was looking phenomenal, hitting that catch and shoot three point jump shot at a really high rate, also creating for himself from that three point range. He also did a tremendous job from that mid range area, whether you talk about the one dribble pull up, the post turnaround fadeaway, the catch and shoot mid range jump shot, sidestep, or even step back. It just seemed like Larry was doing a great job from that range as well. And also driving all the way to the basket, it seemed like Larry was a little bit more athletic than he was in the past and was able to dunk over players, could finish around players with crafty layups. And overall, it just seemed like Markkinen was a lot more skilled out there and a lot more under control. So I definitely think the fact that the Jazz have a player as good as Larry Markkinen has become certainly is a huge reason for why I think they could potentially be a dynasty in the long term future. But even besides Markkinen and Colin Sexton, the Jazz also have some other nice players on the roster like Jordan Clarkson, who they just resigned to a very team friendly deal. And also with all those draft picks they have going forward, they're inevitably going to add a lot more talent to this roster. But overall, I will say I'm extremely excited to see what the Jazz are able to do, not only in the short term future, but of course also in the long term future. And I do think their future is going to be extremely bright just due to the fact that they have so many different options. And in my opinion, they're just in such an amazing situation at this point. And I do think they're going to have a ton of success, as I mentioned. But at this point for Utah, I think the best thing would probably be to just build through the draft, maybe bring in some nice players during free agency that complement your main guys on this roster, and overall just give time to your younger players to inevitably improve as the years do progress, and I think that would put them in the best situation possible. As if their younger players get better quickly, then it gives you more flexibility to trade away some picks if you want to, and bring in some stars right away, or if they're not living up to expectations at least right away, you can continue to build through the draft and give more time to your younger players to eventually live up to their expectations. But I guess only time will tell what does end up happening in the future for the Utah Jazz. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think the Utah Jazz could potentially turn themselves into a dynasty or do you not think so? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy, check one of these two videos popping up now and until the next time, peace out guys.